from Psalm chapter 90, verse 1 through 2. This is the word of God, a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. As you know that we are closed uh, again due to the recent increase of the coronavirus cases. Um, we respectably tried to follow the California government, but ultimately we decided to do this for the sake of the, our members, for our safety. Um, only a very minimum number of people are here in this place right now, very minimum, um, to make this online live streaming worship service to be possible. Um, I really, I want to say, uh, I, I really thank these people who are here in this place that even during this time, they're sacrificially serving the church so that we can worship our God in a best way we can in a given situation. So on behalf of the church, I'm pretty sure that all our church members agree with me that I want to express our gratitude and appreciation to all of you who are here. All right. Good. Okay. Um, we were slowly having people back here in the church and closing down again could be a letdown for many people. Um, we don't even know how long this is going to be like this. We don't know when we can start to come back again. We don't know um, when we can have our old days, normal ministry, fellowship, and gathering again. It seems like that reality is really far away from us. Really far away. Yeah. And so I understand that some people are frustrated and finding this to be depressing too. And this pandemic really changed uh, a lot of things in our lives, almost everywhere, um, wherever you are living, in whatever city or county you live in. Where do you live? I mean, I'm pretty sure all of you who are watching this and joining us this morning, that place is also impacted by this pandemic as well at this moment. But what I want to do this morning is I want to share about a place where you can find the comfort during this time, a place of security, place of comfort, place of rest, place of peace, a glorious habitation, a beautiful residential place. That's what I want to point you to, a place this morning. The Lord is our dwelling place. That's the point of this message, and that's the first point I want to make. The Lord is our dwelling place. Let's go to the first verse of our text, and this is what it says. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Take a moment and let this sink in your mind, brothers and sisters, that you have a dwelling place. That is not just a house, a building, that is more than a geographical area, place, or city, or state. The Lord, your God, is your dwelling place. Let it sink in you. Well, Job chapter 12, verse 10, it says this. In his hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. So, in one sense, in God, every living thing and all creatures have their beings in God, move and breathe in God. They dwell, live in God, all things, all mankind, all living things. For all things are created from God, by God, and all things are sustained by God. But what we see here in the Psalm 90 verse 1 is not just in that sense, in the general sense that, oh, everything is moving and living, have their beings in God. It's not saying that in that general sense, but in a very special, intimate, personal, and covenantal sense of, Lord, we dwell in you. You are our dwelling place. We Christians, we often say that God 
is in us. God lives in us. He dwells in us, and that is right. When we ask little children, where is Jesus? And they often say, well-trained, those who believe, those children will respond to you, Jesus is in my heart. He's in me, and that is true according to the teachings of the Scripture. Yes, Jesus, the Lord, our God, is with us and in us. God, the Holy Spirit, dwells in us, making us as God's holy temple, living temple of God. He dwells in us. But yet at the same time, what our text, verse 1 of Psalm 90 teaches us, is that not only God dwells in us, but we dwell in God. We live in God. He is the dwelling place, a place of our residency, our house, our home. Did you know that you have a living place that is not a building or house or land? Did you think about that this week as you live your life and say, man, I live more than this area, this city, this building, this place that impacted by all kinds of difficulties, challenges, and problems. I live at another place. Were you aware of that this morning? Were you? Did you know about this? Did you think about this? Our... You student, Matthew, beautifully read the scripture for us this morning, and including the headline of the psalm. And the headline of the psalm is, A Prayer of Moses, the Man of God. So that's what this psalm is about. This psalm is a prayer and song of Moses. Yes, that Moses who led the Israel people out of Egypt. That Moses who led them through the Red Sea and led them in the wilderness for 40 years. They were living in the wilderness for 40 years. I'm in the wilderness, the remote place, the wild place, the desert area. That wilderness. Living in that condition. Can you imagine living in that condition for 40 years? And while they were living in the wilderness, they don't know when that wilderness life is going to end. We don't, they don't know when they can finally settle down and live a little better life. They don't know. And you can imagine the life in the wilderness must be so tough, rough, and challenging. So many things must be so difficult. Wilderness brings great lots of uneasiness over many things. I remember oh, one time doing a camping a long time ago at a wild area, not even a campground. So this is a remote area that we couldn't drive. We have to leave the car there, pack everything, carry everything, and walk for miles and miles and miles inside of this wild area, remote place. And literally nothing was nearby, nothing. Obviously, no matter how well you are prepared in this situation, that is nothing like staying in a hotel. It's challenging. It's hard for, from every step. You can imagine starting from bathroom, no toilet, no water, no faucet. You got to draw water. You got to do something. The list can go on. I remember staying in Kenya, Africa, for more than two weeks in a building. It was a nice building, but no electricity. And even that was just challenging. It's no AC, no refrigerator. We had to draw water for shower. These Israel people did not settle in the wilderness permanently. They did not start to build a civilized town or village there. But literally, they were like a camping. They pitched their tents, stayed there for a few days, and then they moved on and again and again. And during that entire wilderness living, they had to trust the promise of God. That God will give them a new dwelling place known as the promised land, the land of Canaan, the land of milk and honey, the place of blessing, a place of safety, place of abundance, place of rest and peace and joy, where they can finally settle down and rest and no more moving. I don't know if you have done moving. That's 
really hard. I, I, I really don't like moving. It's packing everything. Imagine how much these Moses and all these people of Israel must have been longing for that dwelling place as they were living in the wilderness. I wish we could finally have that. And here Moses is not saying in Psalm 90 verse 1, he's not saying that we have endured the entire wilderness life period so that we may get that dwelling place from you, God. That's not what he's saying. Moses rather confesses here that, Lord, you have been our dwelling place during the entire wilderness life. Moses confessed, you have been our dwelling place. Not just we are getting the dwelling place in the future. No, you have been our dwelling place. God does not just give us a dwelling place where he meets our needs. Hear me, he be our dwelling place. A place more than we can ask for. Even the promised land, the land of milk and honey, the land of Canaan, what good is it if the Lord does not stay with Israel? Literally at one time, Israel people rebelled against God. So God told Moses, you know what? Since I promised to you to give the promised land, I will give it to you, but I will not go with you. I will not go with you. And Moses cried and pleaded with God, saying that, What good is it if the Lord, you do not come with us? We, if you don't come with us, we will not move. We will not go. We don't want it. God does not just give us, church, hear me. He does not just give us a place called heaven. He be our heaven. He be our dwelling place. place of joy, place of satisfaction, place of eternal pleasure. He promised to us to be our dwelling place. He does not just give us home. He be our home. That was what Israelite people need to believe and understand in the wilderness life. During the tough, challenging, wild life for 40 years, Moses was able to see more than his immediate environment, his situation, his circumstance. He was able to see another place that he's in. Lord, you are my dwelling place. Here in you, we dwell in your arms. If you have a little children, you will notice this. Well, if you go for a trip, uh, it can be far away, whether it is a camping or staying in a hotel, doesn't matter. If you go to far away, a totally new place, and the children find it to be a brand new place, completely new place, yet the children, your children, you find, will find that they are not anxious, they are not worrisome for their own safety. Oh, this is a totally new place. No, they are not as long as they can see their parents. Their parents are with them. They feel safe. They feel good, just like their home. But even if the kids are staying home, home, imagine a little kid who just woke up from a nap and walking out from a room, and that place is his or her house. So familiar with everything, with all the surrounding, it is a safe place, and everything the child needs is in there. Yet if the child, he or she, finds out that the parents are absent, they're gone, they're not there, you will notice that they become all anxious and they start to cry. And like, why are you crying? This is your home. This is your house. Everything you need is here. Your food is the refrigerator. Your toys are right there. Why are you so anxious? What makes a home for them? A place of comfort, a place of safety place of affection. Isn't it more than just a building? Moses in the wilderness saw that God's tent, we call it tabernacle, 
at the center of the Israel's camp. And God's tent was moving with them wherever, wherever they pitch their tents at the new place, at the center of the entire Israel's camp, there was God's tent tabernacle. And Moses saw that God is moving with us. God dwell with us. All Israel people are under the arms, the wings, the shadow of his wings. We dwell in him under his protection. The symbolic tent of God. Imagine that what they would mean to Moses at the time. Second point, so with that, that being said, this is my second point. The Lord is our dwelling place of comfort, security, and affection. Dwelling place of comfort, security, and affection. Home is a place of safety. All at the beginning of this coronavirus, COVID-19, the government said to the people, Stay home! Stay home! It's safe there! It's safe there! Stay home! That will keep you safe, and it is true. We are safe inside of our house. You don't wear a mask inside of your house. Nobody does. And you don't worry about touching your own bed or your desk. Oh, you, you don't do that after touching your bed. You don't... Sanitize your hands. This is your house. This is your home. This is a safe place. You don't have to worry about, like, even the hot day. You don't have to worry about heat wave warning. Uh, people may faint outside, but inside your home, you don't worry about fainting due to the heat. Well, you may worry about your electrical, electricity bill if you're blasting off AC, but you don't worry about it, whether it's a snow or rain or cold wind or from the wild animals, home is a safe place. Home is a place of comfort. Home is a place of comfort. I don't know about you, but after a mission trip or a speaking engagement trip or I attend a conference and when I come home, I always feel like, Ah, oh, home. Yeah, no place is like home. It's, it's comforting. Even after a vacation, like our family goes somewhere, stay at a nice place. But when we come, we say, we are home. It's, it's not because my house is big and fancy and nice and great and luxurious. It's not. It's not. You can come to my house. It's not big. It's not but something about home that gives us comfort. This is our home. Home is a place of affection. When man's affection is centered on, isn't it why that when some people are far away from their home, they get homesick? They miss it. It's a place of affection. Wind blows and bring massive sand that covers their tents. And it feels like this sand is going to bury them alive. On a frequent occasions, the hot sun will scorch over them during the daytime and other times during the night. Burning cold wind blows from the north against them as if it's going to freeze everything. So they are sitting around the fire while shivering inside of a tent. There's no well or river nearby. There's no water faucet that they can get water easily. There's no free trees that they can feed all Israel people. There's no farm where they can get food easily. They were in the wilderness at nighttime, they were able to hear some animal howling sound. One afternoon, one of the neighbor lady is screaming out because she just found a snake out, just outside of her tent. Sometimes disease spread among the people of Israel, spreading so fast. It's a plague. People are dying one by one. Dying really happened to them. Dying so fast, and people are crying. In pain, crying. 
because of the loss of their loved one. They were in the middle of the wilderness. They cannot keep things clean. They cannot wash full frequently. Keeping a safe distance from each other, it is just a hard thing to do. As they were moving towards the promised land, they had to go through the middle of the enemy's territories. On any day, at any time, from any direction, the enemy, the army of Moab or Amnon, can come against them with spear and sword and arrows. The danger of war can happen any day of the week. Or it can be just a group of raiders come against them. Having all through those things, Moses is singing this song. Lord, you have been our dwelling place. Place that is not just a tent. Place where he found his comfort and safety and joy and love and peace. Lord, you have been Pay attention to this, church. Our dwelling place to all generations. Moses said, our dwelling place. It's not just his personal only dwelling place, but all who trust in God, the Lord is their dwelling place. It's not for only that generation. Moses says to all generations. From Moses to us and to our children. How secure, how safe is this place? Verse 2, Moses says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you have formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. He's the eternal one. The God, the Almighty, who formed the earth, who formed the world. From everlasting and everlasting, you are dwelling in the eternal and the almighty one. He's your shelter. He's your home. He's your dwelling place. Consider that and what relation that we are standing to this eternal and almighty one. He's our home. Every morning, every day, we live in him. We walk in him. We breathe in Him. Just like these Israel people living in this world, and especially this coronavirus, we don't know, and as it gets worse, and the people are closing down again, and the, we don't know where the potential dangers are. They say it's really getting bad. And we don't know how close the things are. How f- we don't, we don't. Where they're coming from, this is... A virus you cannot even see. Are you an anxious soul? Are you anxious? Let me ask you this. Do you live only in the wilderness and nothing more? Do you live only the place of wilderness? Or do you dwell at all the place too? Where do you live? Church, you are at home with God, I mean now, here on earth, right now. This is not a reality that will happen to you far away future when you die and when you go to heaven. Then we dwell with God and in God. No, this is a present reality. We dwell in God. Some Remember Psalm 23 and Psalm 23, David saw this and he sings, Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil. Because for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Because you're with me. In you, I walk through this place. Filled with shadow of death. It's a death, 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 death happening all around me. But I feel no evil because you comfort me. I find a place of comfort here. I find a place of comfort here with you. Because you are with me. This is my dwelling place. I live more than this place. A valley of shadow of death. In Acts chapter 16... 
It says, verse 25, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Paul and Silas, they were in a prison. A terrible condition. I mean, if you look into, if you find anything about prison in the ancient days, at this time, it's a terrible place. Not sanitized, it's not clean. A lot of people get disease during the time in, their temp- in the prison. And you know, their feet are fastened. They don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. What's going to happen to them? Yet yeah, Paul and Saul was praising God. Wait, wait, Paul, did you forget what place you are in right now? Just just open your eyes and look around you. Look how dirty and dangerous it is. Look, your feet, look at this place. How can you sing and praise God here with joy, with confidence? Well, Paul's soul dwell at another place, a secret place of comfort and security. This is my last point, third point. The Lord is our eternal and permanent dwelling place. Eternal and permanent dwelling place. At the nightfall, the pillar of fire stayed with them in motion. Where where they pitched their tents. Maybe tomorrow, at the morning, as the morning sun rises, and the trumpet sounds, they need to stir themselves up from the bed and pack everything and get ready for moving because the pillar of clouds begins to move, which means God is leading their ways again. Soon they will see the ark of God coming out of the tabernacle, carried by the priest and moving, following the pillar of clouds. They do not know where they are going. What direction? They don't know what kind of field, what kind of area, what kind of place are waiting ahead of them. Maybe to the north, massive field of desert. Or maybe to the east, the valleys with rivers, streams, waters. They don't know. What is important for them is not figuring out what's ahead of them, but they need to just remember that God is moving with them and God is leading their ways. Wherever you lead, we will go. And all they need to do is just pack their stuff, their properties, their potteries, and all the personal things. Pack! Because in the morning they will hear, Hurry, hurry, people, we gotta move. We gotta go. The ark of the Lord is moving. This is not your home. Israel, this is not your permanent dwelling place, resting place. We have the promised land ahead of us. We go, we move. They cannot attach to the one spot of the land. Even though sometimes some of their family members or friends passed away during their stay in that area. So they buried their mom and dad or someone there. But tomorrow morning they got to pack and they got to go. They got to go. They cannot fully and completely settle at one place until that day. That means they learned, they understood that they are sojourners, travelers, strangers of the land. They are not home yet. We are just sojourners. We are traveling this world. We are strangers in this world. This is not our permanent place. This city, this state, this is not the house or the apartment you are living in right now. That is not your permanent place, not permanent home. I, I sometimes I see people, you know, they are stressed because of their house, because of their water pipe problem, water leaking problem, or water tank, or crack on the wall because of the earthquake or electricity problem or roof issue or termite issue. All kinds of, oh, we're stressed. What does he tell you? This house, this place we're living, 
They are not permanent. They are not eternal. They are vulnerable. They are breaking down over the time. I remember the, our first old church office, our church place. Whenever it rained, I had to run to the church because water was leaking from the ceiling. And sometimes it fell on my computer. Sometimes I just had to make sure that it doesn't fall on our system, sound system, all the things. I had to run to the church whenever it rained. If we patch one space and it rained, it leaks from the other space, other spots. Like I go there, but I don't have to do that anymore. I thank God for this new place. Like, I don't have to run to this church place whenever it rained. But even this place is not our permanent place for hope of glory. This is not the permanent place for hope of glory. Did you watch the news? What happened in China and Japan? All those houses? Because of the rain and flood, so many houses are ruined. All these places are vulnerable. But it never so with our God. He's our dwelling place, Moses said, to all generations. From the everlasting to the everlasting, you are God. In the person of Christ, you will never ask for another dwelling place. You will never want to move to another place. You will be content, satisfied with that place that you have in Him. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want. I'm content. Satisfied. And then David said in Psalm 23, 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. All the days, not just a certain day, all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell there forever. He is our eternal, permanent, and glorious um, I said he is, which means present tense, right now. That means now, to all who trust in Jesus. 1 John 4.15, whoever confessed that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. God abides, that means he lives, he dwells in the person who trusts, confess in Jesus Christ, and he dwells and lives in God, in the present reality. When Moses said, Lord, you have been, have been, pay attention to the verb tense, have been, that means in the past, have been our, my dwelling place. He is my dwelling place. He still is to all generations. He will continually be throughout the ages. Let me end with this. I'm done. Jesus did not just come to give us a place of safety and comfort and affection and joy called heaven or something else. No, Jesus came to be our home. To be our home. John 14, 23 Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Jesus said, I will come, and my Father will come, and make our home with him. That's a promise. If anyone loves me and keep my word, I and my father will come and make our home with him. This is applicable to you today. As we are living through this challenging season in time, we have a shelter, we have a tower refuge, we have a rock that holds our feet, that we will not be movable. We dwell, stand, rest, live in him. Now, that does not mean that we're not going to get coronavirus and none of the Christians will die. That's not what I mean. But hear me. When I said that he has been and he is and he will continue to be our dwelling place, means even if 
we die because of this or whatever situation, we will dwell in Him. That's not going to be the end of us. There's a place for us. Even, even after that, we will dwell in safety and comfort and joy. We will dwell. There's a place of our dwelling. So church, let your heart be mindful of this throughout this week. Wherever you are, think about this, meditate on this, that I live in God. I live more than this place or house or city or state. I live in God. He's my dwelling place. Let's pray. Amen.